Today, I want to show you three methods that you can use to super tune your PC. Can we call it super tune? Yeah, let's stick with super tune. It sounds cooler. Let me explain. A super tune is what I've been doing all the time. It's just a bit more extensive method of tuning your bow. It's not just shooting through the paper, setting in the timing, getting your knocking point on the right height, and pops your uncle. There you go. When it comes to tuning, I have a bit of OCD, and it, it's hard for me to not run my arrow in the center with a perfect tune. So I'll do anything to get this thing to tune the way I want it. So, three methods that I used to manipulate my tuning is limb swaps, shim on the cams, and the angle of my cable guide. So, this is what I've done. So my problem was the bow refused to give me a nice bullet hole tear like this. I had a prominent tail left tear and no matter what I did, it just could not give me that. And it makes me unhappy. It, it gives me sleepless nights, to be honest. So I switched out my arrows with stiffer ones going from a, a, a 340 to a 300 spine and it showed some uh, good results, but it was not enough. So this is the stage where I thought, okay, well, let me start shimming my cams. So what I mean by shimming my cams, so if you're new to this terminology, it's simply by moving my cams left to right by switching out the spaces that's between the limbs and the cams. What I've exactly done is I moved my bottom cam as far left as I could and it showed promising signs. So I decided to do this with the top cam as well. After doing this maneuver, it was still a bit sensitive. If you messed up with your grip a bit, then it would still throw it out pretty far and I was not completely happy by that. So what I've decided is to switch out my limbs. So that I have both the stiffer deflections on the right hand side of the bow and when I mean the stiffer deflections, it's the one with the higher numbers. Uh, and I have the, um, the weaker deflections on the left hand side. So what I basically wanted to achieve is to get the cam lean in sync. So in effect, uh, my bottom cam is leaning to this side and the top cam is also leaning to this side. So somewhere here in the middle, it's meeting and lining up. And that made a huge difference. It was unbelievable. And to round it off, I played with the angle on my cable guide system. So the specific adjustment that I made was to move out uh, my cables out of the way. So that it gives me more tension on the inside of the bow on this yoke. Now I know it is impossible to do cam lean on a 13 yoke system like this of the Evolve cams. But when you start shimming out your, uh, your cams and starting switching your deflections around, then you'll be able to achieve the same effect as with bows that have yokes that, um, that hooks onto the sides of the limbs. Let me explain my logic. You have two different deflections of limbs one weaker than the other one. The stiffer limb, the 125, exerts a larger force on your axle. You can draw it like that. And your weaker limb exerts a smaller um, force on your axle. So if you move your cam left or right, then you'll be able to manipulate the lean. So when you move your cam all the way to the right, it will cancel out the larger force exerted on the axle, bringing it more upright. So if that's what you want, you can do it like that. But I needed to move mine to the left in order to create my top cam lean like this. So the more you move it to the left hand side, the more you increase the torque of the stiffer limbs force. And this one, will stay just exactly the same, causing your cam to lean a bit more. This is what my limb deflection and cam lean looked like when it came from the factory. This being my top limb and cam and this my bottom limbs and cam. Um, 
So I had my weaker limbs opposite of each other and obviously my stiffer limbs op uh, opposite of each other. And I needed to turn this one around. So it would make sense to start moving it to the left so I can either bring it a bit more upright or even start moving it in that direction. But I had to swap limbs in order to create this so that I can have the stiffer limbs over each other and my cams facing each other. So this helped me to move my string, the back of my arrow, a bit more to the right, aligning the front and the back of my arrow so that I get that. I didn't have a problem with clearance on my cable or anything like that. It was just to give me some more tension on the inside to manipulate the cam in even further. With this setup, it's super forgiving and yes, it's tedious. It is a lot of work. It took me about three days to complete everything um, and a few sleepless nights as well. But hopefully you can make use of this. So if you struggle with a tail right tear through the paper, it's not the end of the world. Just do exactly the opposite that I've told you now. Um, you will probably um, get this if you are a left-handed archer. Uh, so I hope this helps. If you still struggle to get a paper tune, uh, hit me up down below in the comments and I'll try and help you to sort it out. So just a quick recap. I got a tail left tear, so I decided to uh, shift my cams out to the left-hand side, starting with the bottom one. I did a limb swap, getting all the stiffer deflections on my right-hand side. Uh, in other words, the limbs with the higher numbers on the right hand side and also move out and give me some more clearance on the cables. And that's basically it. That is three days of work for you in a few seconds. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe it if you found it helpful. If you know of somebody that experiences the same problem, uh, send it on to them. And remember to practice some safe social distancing. I don't think it's too difficult for us archers. Um, but in any way, stay safe and I will see you in the next one. See if you can spot the difference in my setup. Comment down below if you got it.